Hi, and welcome to FreshMind.com. My name is Eric, and this is part two of our lampshade. I'm going to move quickly just so we can keep these videos short. We are going to be UV mapping everything, and we're going to start out by creating a checkerboard pattern. So I'm going to go to the Windows menu, Rendering Editors, over to Hypershade. Inside the Hypershade, I'm going to click on Lambert, left-hand side, puts it down in the work area. I'm going to right-click on it, select Rename, and I'm going to name this SHDR underscore checkered. All right, we're going to use a file. So over here on the left-hand side, I'm going to click on File. I'm going to double-click on the File node. Opens up the attributes for it. You'll see image name. The far right, there's a button with a folder on it. I'm going to click that button, and now we can navigate in our computer to find the file. But Maya automatically looks in the Source Images subfolder first, which is why we put all those pictures in there, our files in there. All right, I'm going to select our checkerboard pattern, click Open. And now we need to attach our file to our shader. So I'm just going to middle mouse drag it, and drop it onto the shader. Select color, because we're going to replace the gray color with our file. Now that that's done, we want to assign it to all of our objects. So I'm going to marquee drag around all our objects in the view panel. And then over here in the hypershade, I'm just going to right click on our checkerboard shader, assign material to selection. Close out our hypershade. Let me make some more room over here. Turn on my wire so you can see everything a little better. Now we can't see the checkerboard, but as long as we're in our view panel, we can press number six and now we can see our pattern. Now we need to rotate our wall because it's not lined up with the Z. Z axis is front and X is left and right. And we want our wall to be behind so that when we're working in a front view, our wall is over here on the left. It's not behind our table. So let's go back in here. I'm gonna select the wall. Channel box, rotate Y, negative 90. Let me go to a top view and just kind of bring everything back. And I'm just going to move it to where it's just right behind our table, but a little bit gap. All right, let's start off by file, save scene as. I'm going to name this underscore two underscore UV mapping. All right, let's just go ahead and zip through this. I'm going to create a layer. Double click. Let's name this layer LYR underscore um, mapped. So everything that's mapped is going to go on this layer. We'll turn the visibility off. Start on the wall. Cre create UVs, planar mapping, options box. The wall is facing the Z, Z direction. So let's make sure we have Z axis selected. Project. All right, object mode. Wall's done. Right click, add selected objects to that layer. Next, it's going to be our lampshade. Let's go to create UV, cylindrical mapping, options box, edit, reset settings, project. Lampshade's done. Right click on our layer, add selected objects. Next is our lamp posts, which are not been beveled yet. So let's select the lamp post, shift select the base, go to edit mesh, bevel, and let's go to our input nodes. Expand the bevel, look for offset, and let's just change that to, I've got 0.1 on it. All right, select the lamp post, create UVs, automatic mapping, object mode, edit UVs, UV texture editor. It's kind of hard to see, so I'm going to go up to image, dim image. Over here, the top, I'm going to click on the icon for the alpha. Allows me to see the UVs a little better, and I'm also going to click on the toggle the shaded UV display. Anything blue means the UVs are the right way. Anything red means the UVs are flipped. If they were flipped, we could select the UVs, go to the polygon menu, go down to flip, and it will flip them around and make it blue. All right. I'm going to right-click, select UV, click on a point, control, right-click to shell. Use my move tool. Move that out of the way. Control, right-click to shell. Just select the point. Control, right-click to shell. Just want to show you how these are all separated. All we're going to do is sew this stuff together. So right click, edge. I'm going to click on an edge. Polygons, move and sew UV edges, options box, edit. I guess, yeah, edit, reset settings. Everything's default, move and sew. All right, you can see how it moved over there and sewed it together. So let's just keep doing that. Select another edge, polygons, move and sew. Select an edge, polygons, move and sew. All right, our texture for the wood grain, the grain is running left and right. So I'm going to select all these, oh, right click UV, select all these UVs, and I'm going to rotate this. So now it lines up with the grain. So our UVs, our wood grain, will run up and down on our lamppost. All right, let's um, use our scale tool and scale these UVs just to make our pattern look like it's supposed to look. All right, so that's done. 
going to move all this out of the way. Let's select the lamp post. Go to object mode. Create UVs, automatic mapping, object mode, edit UVs, UV texture editor. We're going to do the exact same thing. Right click, or actually edge, select an edge, polygons, move and sew. Select another edge, polygon, move and sew. Okay, I really can't see what's going on, so right click UV. Let's select a UV, control, right click to shell. All right, there we go. Control right or just right click edge, select the edge, polygons, move and sew. Select this bottom edge, polygon, move and sew. All right, right click UVs. I'm gonna select all these UVs, and I just want to find out is this the top or is this the bottom? Okay, the texture on the top is moving, so this is obviously the uh, top textures. And we, I want the wood grains to run left and right on this, so I'm gonna rotate this. So now if we look at our texture it's uh, the right way and our wood grain will run left and right. So let's put this square over here on either the right or the left. So right click edge and this is going to go over here. Uh, when I select this edge you'll see one highlights over here and that's fine. So polygon, move and sew. There we go. I'm going to make these squares look about the same as the post which actually it already does. So that's good. If it didn't I would just select all the UVs, use my scale tool, and just scale that up or down. I'm going to shift select the post, so now we've got all these UVs, and I'm just going to start moving this to make all these sort of in a square. So let me select these, control, right click to shell. I'm just going to put these next to each other. Now this is the top and bottom of our post. They're never going to be seen in a render, so I don't care if there's a texture on there, or if there's not a texture, or if it's stretched from here to the moon. I really don't care. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these, and I'm just going to shrink these down and fit it inside this area down here. All right, select all these UVs. We want to put those inside our grid up here in the upper right-hand corner. But we want to use as much of that as possible. We want our UVs to be as big as we can get it, but not. we don't want it going outside this square. So there's all UVs for our lamp post and our lamp base. So that's done. Now before I add that, if we look at this table, it's the same shape as this lamp base. So instead of remapping all this for our table, we can just transfer the UVs from this to our table. So let's select the lamp base, shift select the table, create, uh, go up to our mesh menu, down to transfer attributes, options box, edit, reset settings. The only thing I'm going to do is down here where it says attribute settings, I'm going to change it from the sample space from world to local and then click transfer. There we go. Edit, delete by type, history. Uh, by deleting the history after I did that it broke the link because uh, they were still somewhat connected as far as UVs go. Alright, let's add also this table leg is the same shape as this lamppost so let's do the same thing. Select the lamppost, sh shift select a leg Go to your mesh menu, transfer attributes, did the same thing. So if I select this lamp post, you can see we've got some purple edges now on this leg. That's because they're still connected as far as UVs are concerned. So I'm going to select both those, edit, delete by type, history, and that gets rid of it. So now if we select them, they're separated. Okay, let's select our lamp post, our lamp base, right click on our layer, add selected objects, just to get it out of the way. As far as this table goes, let's select the top. Go to Edit UVs, UV Texture Editor. And I hope I'm not moving this too fast. This is kind of some simple UV mapping. I just don't want this to go too long. All right, right click. I'm going to select all these UVs. And I'm just going to scale this up really big so our checkerboard pattern is really small. And the reason being is I want to see what these edges look like. All right, you can see how the edge is stretched. So I'm going to go up here, select some UVs. And where are these at? There we go, they're on this side. I'm just going to scale this until the pattern looks like it's supposed to. Alright, there we go. So now I'm just going to look, zoom in here in the UV texture editor and get all the sides to match that. So about like that. About like that. And I'm not trying to be perfect, just get it so it looks close. And about like that. All right, looks like some of the UVs are kind of not straight, but you can go in there and fix them if you want to. But I think it's going to be fine for this project.
As far as the top of our table, it looks square enough. Right click UV, select all the UVs. I'm just going to shrink this down a little bit and move it out of the way. Because we're going to put our tabletop UVs with our the uh, table leg UVs. So let's grab this table leg. Select these UVs. And actually, not the we just want, we don't want these top and bottom ones. We just want these. So let me just select some of those. Control, right click to shell. Scale tool. And let's just scale this until we get a, our texture looks right. So something about like that looks good. Let's try to get it to match the same size as the squares on our table. So maybe a little bit bigger. Something about like that. Close enough. All right, let's select everything now. What we want to do is we want to organize these in such a way to where everything is in such a, a square as we can get it. So we don't want to make it like this because, I mean, that's a long ways from being square. But if we put it up here, it's a little more square. I could move these wherever. Select everything. Let's pull it down to that grid, upper right-hand corner. We want it as big as we can get it, but we need it to fit inside. All right. Now we got a lot of wasted space here. I'm going to improve this a little bit by right click edge. I'm going to select this edge right here and we're going to cut this side off, this bottom. So with that edge selected, polygons, cut UV edges, right click UV, just like one of the UVs on that bottom, control right click to shell. And now it just separates that. Now this is the bottom UVs. If I you can see right there it's it's moving the bottom. I don't this bottom is not going to be seen in our render, so I don't really care what the texture looks like down there. If it's exactly the same as the top, that's okay because it's not going to be seen. So I'm just going to move this and put it right on top, like right there. What that means is the texture on the bottom is going to be exactly identical to the texture on the top. But this right here is going to allow us to utilize more of our texture. So now I can select all of these. I can make it bigger now. All right, so there we go. Hope that made sense to you. This uh, table leg, I'm going to transfer the UVs to the other leg. So select, shift, select another one. Same thing we did before, mesh, transfer attributes. Select a, a leg, shift, select another one, mesh, transfer attributes. Or you can just press G to repeat the last command. So select the leg that's good, shift select one that's bad, mesh, transfer attributes. Select everything, edit, delete by type history, and our table is, is done. Now if you wanted the table legs to all look different, then you would want to go in to your edit, your UV texture editor. You could select the leg, we could select all these UVs, and we could move those. That way we've got both these legs in a different position so it's a different part of the texture but for this tutorial I don't care if they're all the same so I'll just have to leave them all on top of each other so there's our UVs for our table it's done add those to our layer and now we're on to the picture frame the picture frame now is going to be a solid color so it doesn't really matter if there's a texture on there or not so let's just select it create UVs we can either do a planner mapping or a, a automatic mapping and then just be done with it. Add that to our layer. This is our glass pane. Again, it's just going to be a solid uh, material, no texture, so we don't have to worry about stretching or anything like that. So I'm just going to do a create UV, planner mapping, options box. It's facing in the Y direction, so let's select, make sure it's project from Y axis. Click project. Object mode, add it to our layer. And the last one is our picture. Now, Create UVs, planar mapping, options box, same thing, Y axis, project. If you look at the pattern on here, the pattern is squished up and down, but it's okay. And the reason being, hopefully I can explain this correctly. Let me open up the UV texture editor. Okay, here's our object on the left. It's kind of rectangular. Here's the UVs on the right. The UVs are square. If I move these UVs, uh, you can see what I'm talking about. 
there's our UVs. It's completely square. So when we did this projection, Maya took the UVs and stretched it out to make it square. Well, the same is going to happen with the photograph. When we bring our photograph inside Maya, the photograph is going to be stretched to make it square. But since the object on this left over here, since this object is the exact same size as our texture, once we apply it, since the photograph and the UVs are going to match, it's all going to look good. It's all going to look, it's all going to look great. Now, if we had a square photograph, then when we applied it, it would be squished. But since it's not square, it's going to stretch it. It's, but it's going to shrink it when it puts it on this right here because it squished it down onto our object and it's going to look, it's going to look fine. So I hope that kind of made sense to you a little bit. <laughs> That's done. Let's add it to our layer. Let's bring everything back up. Let's select all of our objects. Edit, delete by type history, and make sure we save it. And that concludes the texturing. So that uh, I'll see you in the next episode, and we'll start working on, well, that'll conclude the UV mapping, actually. That wasn't the texturing, that was UV mapping. We'll do all the texturing in the next episode. And as always, we thank you for watching.